Hello students, this video will introduce the photo booth selfie assignment. This photo is a series assignment, so you will need to take more than one photograph for this assignment. For this assignment, you want to think about taking a minimum of six photos. Uh, however, if you take more than six, you will be able to edit down those pictures. So in this example here of me, you know, the final grid had nine photos, but I did actually take 15 or 16 photographs so that I could have a choice of editing. As you take these photographs, you want to focus on showing emotion or telling some sort of story or action. Uh, in order to create some variety between each of your selfie photographs, you want to think about changing uh, a couple of these things. Think about your expression, your pose, your clothing or hairstyle, uh, or the background or the point of view. Your camera can move, uh, your face can change, your clothing can change. For example, in these two here where I'm focusing on just showing an emotion or expression, the point of view is pretty consistent. In all of these photographs, it really just captures this part of the body. The camera does move around a little bit on my example on the left. The other thing to consider is, you know, yes, your face can change. Your face can show different expressions, happy, sad, angry, you know, those kind of things. But then you can also think about what you're doing with your hands and arms. Typically, if you are looking in a specific direction, uh, that will help to create movement around your photo booth grid. If you point, the viewer's eyes will sometimes naturally go to or follow where you're pointing. So that is also a helpful tool. You know, in this example here, there's a couple of times where I'm pointing or I'm pretending to hold something up. The other thing to consider during the, if you're doing expression or emotion, is you want to keep the background pretty simple so that, and consistent so that the focus is on just your face. Uh, you don't want to have a ton of different backgrounds and a ton of different poses and a ton of different costume changes or clothing changes because then things will be weird. However, if you're thinking about choosing a, or doing action or telling a story, uh, you know, in these examples from the artist Cindy Sherman, she's creating fictional stories. So you don't really actually know what's going on with these characters. Her artwork is much more about, you know, the fiction of creating drama. So she has created a bunch of different characters using different costumes and settings. Uh, but in all of them, her the face is pretty much the same, is very similar. She also is an excellent artist who uses eyes a lot. If you are interested in telling more of a realistic story, that is fine too. You know, babysitting your little brother, your little sister. Uh, in this example on the right, you know, this artist is kind of playing with her little brother or sister. In this example by Carrie Mae Weems, she is photographing, you know, the story of what goes on around the kitchen table. So the kitchen, t the point of view stays the same, the setting stays the same. And really her outfit is pretty much the same in most of these pictures. But then the people and the props kind of move around this uh, setting. If you are interested in taking one of these more, you know, storytelling series, you may need to enlist a family member or friend to help point the picture, point the camera, or prop it up on a table or cabinet. In this example uh, that Nico made last year, um, I, he, you know, took a couple sets of series. So even though he edited down to this essential six to show action. Um, he did probably do a couple takes on this, but the key thing about the story is that it has a, or this action, just like with our keyframe animation, it has a beginning, uh, a middle and an end and the beginning and the end are kind of at the same position. Um, and the point of view stays the same. The camera angle stays the same, but the action changes. The other thing that I would encourage you to do is think about potentially changing the point of view. Nobody says that we need to keep our selfie camera at arm's length. You can bring it in and kind of move it around your face to create some more abstract shots. 
you can mix in these close-ups with full-length photographs, or you could do all close-ups. That's just another possible thing. I do have four, three major tips to help you um, take good selfie photographs. The number one tip that I have is to try to use natural light whenever possible. That could be, you know, window light coming in from a window, but it could also be light that's outside in a park or in, you know, even just on, in your neighborhood. Um, typically, if you're outside in a park, you know, shade is better than direct sunlight because it will create some stronger shadows, but natural light will make your skin look smoother. Please do not use camera flash like on the right here. It tends to flatten out everything and the lighting is not as flattering. The second tip is, you know, think about doing different camera angles. Nobody says we have to put the always have to put the camera directly in front of us and be looking straight at the camera. What if you put the camera above looking down or below looking up or bring it in closer, like I was saying for the close up example. Also, you don't have to be looking at the camera. If you look to the side or to the top or to the bottom, typically that's a sign like it shows thinking or reflection. It can create a very nice dramatic pose. The third tip that I have is to check, this might or might not be the case, some cameras have a better rear facing camera than a front facing camera. So if you are taking your selfie and you can see your screen, you are using the front facing camera. And to save money, cell phone companies will usually put a lesser quality microchip into this camera. So you do wanna try, if possible, to use the rear facing camera. This may mean that you have to hold your phone up and have your screen facing away from you. And you have to use like the side buttons of your cell phone to take the picture, but you will get a better quality photograph. Um, I don't think it's as big of a deal on the newest iPhones, but on the older iPhones, it definitely is. My fourth and final tip uh, is to be conscious of your background. Try to keep it simple and intentional and to avoid bright or backlit, back, backlit um, backgrounds like the example here on the right. What this means is if the sun or a lamp or a light bulb is behind your head, what will happen is your face and body will be fully in shadow and your camera will not know what to do, how to adjust for that exposure. And so consider turning your body, changing the angle so that, that you can let that natural bright light hit you on the front of your face. So then just to recap as we close for your photo booth selfie assignment, you want to take a minimum of six photos, but I would highly recommend that you take more than six so that you have editing options. You want to show an emotion, action, or tell a story. And then you want to create some sort of variety in your pose by changing things such as the expression, pose, clothing, hair, background, or point of view. You don't need to do all of those things, but you should aim to do at least two different exchanges like expression and pose or background and pose or point of view and pose or something like that. So think about two of those qualities. Uh, for this assignment right now, you just need to upload you all of the pictures that you've taken onto Google Classroom. Next week, we will arrange these into a grid. I hope everybody is safe and well. I can't wait to see the photographs that you're taking. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me and we can set up a time to meet. Thank you and have a great day.